It is now 6.01. I'd like to open up the meeting of the Woodbury Select Board for Monday, May 8th, 2023. So, any adjustments to the Select Board agenda? I have one. Uh, Mike and Darlene Richardson wanted to come and I messed up getting their request in time so they didn't get on the agenda, but I think it would be nice to add them and let them speak early. Maybe 6.05. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, we should be done with our other important business. Yep. That sounds good. Um, any other adjustments to the select board agenda at this point? Well, under updates and other business, we can talk about the school water. What do we know now? Uh, you want to do that along with school generator repairs needed? Yeah. Just do it at the same. Do it. Do it at the same time or well, on the we same. Could, but I, they're not really related. But. Oh well, they are in they some ways. <laughs> On the top, school generator at 6.30. Right. Yeah. yeah. So let's just do that at the same time. Okay. Any other adjustments? So we're in the midst of approving bills and payroll orders. They'll be finished before, um, well, they'll be finished after the meeting adjourns, pending any discussion. Uh, the minutes have been approved, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lizzie, yes? Yep. Okay. So uh, yeah. the, <laughs> the, the minutes for the April 24th meeting have been approved by signature. I was absent for that meeting, so that just required two signatures. Um, open for public comment. Mm. I guess this is probably a good place to put it. Okay. <laughs> the MBI trailer down in the common. We've had lots of inquiries on why it is parked there. Okay. And now we need to look into that. Now we know whose it is. Yeah. Without hearing other public comment, I'd like to recognize Mike or Darlene Richardson for their comments. Um, Mike Richardson, Ainsworth Road, my wife Darlene. And we came to lodge a complaint with the house on the corner of Ainsworth Road and Route 14. It's obvious that it's being used, I think, to sell some drugs out of. Um, they have a mud pit there. There's cars blocking the road at various times. Um, people coming and going, stopping for a couple minutes and leaving. And it's just been ongoing for so long and nothing's getting done about it. And I'm just, I mean, the dwelling itself is, I guess, unlivable, supposedly. I mean, the, the uh, state environmental reviews or but environmental perspective Ryan McCall, Ryan McCall yeah. enforcement yeah. officer mm -hmm. yes he stopped up the other day and tried to kind of make peace on behalf of the whoever is staying there but yeah which is a different person now. Who, it's who, not who was trying to make peace with you or with well he was Tom or Paul kind of defending the guy saying he was a good kid trying hard but I really think he's a little misguided because there's a lot of bad stuff going there. And it's just, they're tearing up the road. I mean, they just graded the road and every day somebody pulls in, peels out, up and down. They turn around at Chance Payette's place, peel out, going back down. It's just, it's nuts. And we've been told if we want to do something about it to call the state police. Well, state police, I think, are kind of busy. But it's not the only place in town that the police have been asked to well, monitor, unfortunately. That could be added to the well, list, I guess. I understand that if 
if it's a, a non-livable dwelling, there are people staying there. Yes. So somebody needs to be made aware of that. Susan, no, there, I don't think there's any definition of non-livable. But like Ryan probably told you, if there's no sewer and water, right. it is illegal. Right. Well, people are always there. They're out urinating and defecating mm -hmm. right in view of our house. From, from my living room door, sitting on my couch, mm -hmm. I'm watching all these people pee next to the garage. Mm -hmm. So if I have guests, they're mm -hmm. watching them pee next mm -hmm. to the garage too. Like. Come on, really? It's and we have some video that we would love for you to listen to and one of them to see cuz mm. this is what So we the other deal last with Thursday all night time. and honestly I've looked at most of the vehicles that are coming and going in the yard and they're basically have a paper plate taped in the back window mm -hmm. and they're not inspected, they're not registered. They're illegal. And so this the other day this guy was going out turning around before you get to Route 14, right there at the end of the road, and he'd gun it and come flying back up and literally jump the Jeep into the mud. Mm. And, and it's like over and over. And, and, over. Over. and then they're just revving their motors, and it's, it's, it's disgusting. And uh, is there something we can do about well, it? Well, as you know, <laughs> we, we took this to court. At, at the request of I didn't all know the that neighbors. you went to court. Well, it did go to court uh, under our zoning ordinance, which says that uninspected vehicles and miscellaneous junk have to be stored out of view of the public road, and that is a public road. I will say so we they went cleaned for, up the junk vehicles, but for, now we, it's just a mud pit. We went, yeah, well, I noticed yeah, last year when they were cleaning up, when they first started cleaning up, I noticed they had scraped a lot of it, and I said, oh, God, that's going to be muddy in the summer. Take it right up. So I've been up for there lately. Yeah, it's, it's a anyways, beautiful we, thing. We, did, we went to court. We took it to court. The, sp the town spent over $4,000. Um, it's adjudicated now, so it's okay to talk about it in public. But the court did decide that um, we could close the case with a fine. And um, what comes next? Yeah, I don't know. So I mean, the court found that it was a violation. And because it took so many months, so many times at the... Is there currently a lien on the property? Mm, I don't think currently. Yours will be. There will be. Hmm? Yours, the town's will be. That will be a lien against that property. I do believe it will be, but I don't think you've seen it yet. So yes, it's not the 4,000. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, good. Because I thought they were going to have till July 1st or something like that. No. I got the paperwork one day last week. Oh, good. Okay, so there is a lien. Yeah, because Ryan said that he thought there was a four. That must be the four thousand. He the said 4, he thought there was a four thousand yeah. dollar lien on. Is now is that a fine or is that? It is a fine. Bad but taxes? If it doesn't get paid, then it becomes a lien, and the lien uh, only gets paid if the property is sold. So. So we can't buy that and property for $4,000. So right. it's public knowledge that Tanya Daigle is still the owner of the yes. property? and it is a year. It's delinquent only one, by one year. By one year. So the first year she had it, she didn't pay? She did pay. Oh, she did? The first year it was paid. Yes, okay. more than one year. So, so. If it comes up for sale, I mean, is there, how do you publicly notify people for tax? My, my attorney is setting up, I have five parcels right now that have gone to the attorney. He's going to be setting up, he's done the history in the vault, um, so he's just going to be bouncing me an email telling me um, where he's advertising it. And is that going to be one of them? No. 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 Not as of now, no. It has to be, two years I don't know behind. what the policy is, two or three years behind? Two, two. two years without paying or setting up a payment. Okay. Um, plan and signing on it. Um, so yeah, if it goes. Because if I'd have known it was up for tax sale before, I'd have bought it. It wasn't up for tax sale. sale. It wasn't. It her shack. Was it? No, it was not. It her was shack was for sale. I was yeah. told it was. Well, the mortgage yeah. company finally put it up for sale after years of. And it shouldn't have been doing right. anything. Yeah, Tim and Steph said the same thing. They would have bought it too. And sure. Just, well, they we all, just leveled yeah. it. They, they went up and beyond um, the price that Tim wanted to. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, Tim did, you know, just didn't see the sign. He was so anyway, back to the grievance you know. pertaining to today. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what can we do? I mean, it, it's really ridiculous to have to, it, I mean, it, the value of that place is really killing the value of my place. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if they don't pay their taxes, can you drop mine? Exactly. <laughs> what the heck, you know? I, I know you hate to hear it, but I mean, nice. I got to complain to somebody. And <laughs> well, you yeah, guys are the first in line. Hearing us. <laughs> well, we do. I mean, we have other places in town where there's lots of traffic in and out, and the police have been called over and over, and. It, uh, is that the route I should take? I mean, it, it, we feel like we we, we literally feel like a nuisance calling the cops, the we, state police that we're on the middle barrier or something. No, middle, I know, I know. Middle 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 sex, middle sex. Yeah, they're in Berlin now. Berlin. 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 Yeah. But I mean, it's we literally watched on a Friday night. The place had been deserted. A car showed up. Was there? They went inside. It was there 10, 15 minutes, and then all of a sudden, there's like six or seven cars. Everybody's running in, coming out, getting in their car, and leaving. And I don't... I, yeah, you know, it's hard. I mean, other places are kind of known what's going on, and this is a new one. I didn't, I didn't know whether there were drugs involved. I don't know. I haven't heard about that. But. Well, they're, they're the newest ones at the house, mm -hmm. so it's a, whole, it's a whole new crowd now. Well, yeah, and it's Tanya's nephew. You know, and they're young. They're all pretty young. And I mean, like I said, they, there, there isn't a legal vehicle in the yard. But they're not parked there, right? Or I did see a new this, one. I think there's it was a, a couple. One. All right, so right now there's one out in the mud pit hung up on a rock. Mm -hmm. And then and there's two others parked next to the garage. Mm -hmm. But and they're they, not like abandoned. Or if they're registered, they must be inspected. If they've got I a paper don't think plate. they're registered. I really don't believe they're they have a paper plate. Ryan said they have to cross the road. That no, all have these guys get those paper plates. You print on your on your computer at home. They put them in your back window and ride around for months. You know. And they're like a they're five, five day, day yeah, a five, five day tag. Thing. So you're saying that they're not registered? That's something you could report to the police. If people are driving around unregistered vehicles. That's Dangerous. I mean, that's something they can get picked up with. What and they don't even look inspectable. I mean, they're junks. They're yeah. literally pieces of junk. <clears throat> what did Ryan say to you about whether or not there was any enforcement that the ANR could do? He said that there's their hands are tied. And he wants to try to help. He he wants to go toward the good with this kid, Thomas, mm. whoever Thomas is, yeah. um, because apparently there's already a pre-approved loan for $36,000 to help him with water. Or yeah, something. that's not going to happen because he doesn't own the property. Right. Ta Tanya, if Tanya, Tanya, well, if Tanya lived there, they, they might be able to get Ryan the Ryan suggested to him to get the building and the property in his name, but right. I don't know but that involves, what his... Yeah, going to a lawyer and getting the deed and stuff like that. And, but... Uh, these are not people who are good at stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. we show, I guess we said our piece. And hmm. Would you guys be willing to show me the video? Absolutely. I not up the second, but... Oh, no, I'll show it to you right now. Maybe, I well, think you actually, guys might all get a kick out of it. Probably, probably better if we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> There's like um, two that I really want you to see. I would, I would like to see it, um, and then I'm willing to make a formal complaint with the state police on your behalf as a select, as the chair Thank of the you. select board. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Because um, I've been to the bottom of that property a number of times as well, and I agree with you all. So, Thank if you. we can do that offline. I could send it to that? you if you want me to send no. it to your phone. If, or? Uh, yeah, we could do that. Maybe it's better if we just sat down and took a look right. at it. I'll okay. do it as an independent citizen, but as the chair of the select board, I have a little bit more teeth. I'll make the formal complaint with the state police. Perfect. And um, can't say it's going to go anywhere because right. okay. they're really busy. I but as long as, as, long as we start the process of a record of complaints, 
maybe we can get some traction. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Does that sound like a reasonable first step? Very much for so. you all. Yes. All right. Yep. Um, and I'll get back in touch with Brian and see what what A and R really is thinking. Ryan is uh, unfortunately stretched really thin. I'm sure he is. He, he's the, really the only person who is doing enfor enforcement. And he's got a list of and just in Woodbury. He's got. Four he's got it. Yeah, as long as his arm. So, yeah, so, um, <laughs> so, but I will get back in touch with Ryan about that property awesome. as well. Appreciate does that it. seem like a reasonable yes. next yep, step for you all? Absolutely does. Okay. Um, so, if you're willing to, my email and everything is available. Yep. If you want to send me stuff, and we can make a time maybe to just meet. Okay. Let's do that. Does that sound like, mm -hmm. like a good plan? Yep. Okay. Yeah, absolutely does. That way we don't hold you guys up forever, but I do want to deal with it. Appreciate getting us in first, too. <laughs> you don't have to be here forever. Do you have any more questions for us, though, when we have you? I don't think so. Okay. Appreciate your help. Yeah, of course, you yeah. Listening. Get in touch, and um, we'll, we'll figure out. All right, we do this awesome. Next. All, right. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thank appreciate you. it. We appreciate it. Thanks for the time. Um, so we're up for the town clerk's report. Ms. Turkey, do you want to see anything else about what you know about the MBI trailer that's parked in the town common? I mean, other than the complaints that have been about it? That's do all. I have no idea who... I've heard rumor who the driver is, but I personally have not seen him leave so, that trailer there. Do you have more information? I don't. I just have what she said. She heard that it was Kirk Gallant who lives up the, the, the other end of the big curve up here, and that's probably why he doesn't want to bring it home with him. But Well, I can't say that. He hasn't been? asked for permission, though. He's been doing it for a couple of months. Property. On and off. Yeah. Yeah. Night yeah. And coming early in the morning and leaving with it. Hmm. Yeah. But I can't, I can't do that. It's not what, that's not what the temp common is for. Um, because then the, when it starts getting a little bit warmer, the people in 21 Valley Lake Road are not going to appreciate that trailer being parked there. <laughs> but we, but we, but we, don't, uh, we don't actually know whose trailer it is. We just have no. a rumor about whose trailer it is. Right. Right? Okay. He works for them. It's his trailer. Right. I've seen the I've seen the you know the truck part of the trailer go up my road at least once. Okay. <laughs> and go, where is that guy going with the no? Um, <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> so uh, you can you give me contact information yeah. if you would, then I'll yeah. I'll call and be the yeah. I'll be that person. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Yeah, That's great. Really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Miss Brandy, would you? I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Ricky, I'm sorry I interrupted you, but it's your time for the clerk's report. Pam has been sending out, uh, she sent out the first notice for the dogs that have not been licensed by the 1st of April. Mm -hmm. And we're right now we're down to 36 from 2020, this current year, okay. as of uh, April 1st. There's 36 dogs left to be licensed. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to tackle the ones that didn't license from 21 also. Ooh. Wow, okay. And the second notice for those is due to go out on the 11th, which is what, Thursday, Thursday. this week? Mm -hmm. Great. And I have received a information request from Darren, and I cannot pronounce his last name. He lives across the street up on the hill. Yep. You said it Okay. And... He's the new school board member for the elementary school. Right. And they would like to know the school property. Who owns the land? Is it the town? Yes. It's the town that owns it. What about where the spring is at this current it's time? It's a right of way. It's a right of way, but we don't own it. Penny Allen, Penny and Reggie Allen own the land. Because I went back through deeds and I can't find. So it's Allen's. Okay. Yeah, we have a right of way that's been established, but as far as I can tell. Yep. But no, we don't own the property. Okay. Yeah, they. Nor the subsurface rights. Larry, I was, Larry used to, there should be a, a binder, a white binder in the vault that has a lot of information on the, the wellhead protection area. 
Okay. I'm going to write you something in there. Thank you, Mama. I can apply this. And you have Hawaii. Sorry. That's okay. I looked at this another time. Oh, okay. <laughs> Taking the opportunity to look at that one. I think that's... Oh, and I received one more complaint about the condition of the cabaret. And I told them that Alfie was in this morning and said he was going to grade that on Tuesday. Okay. So that's... And you said... Um, Brett Meyer, Washington County Sheriff's. Oh, okay. So it's right now that it's tentative for May 22nd. So they've put in a request to be on the agenda for the next meeting. Yes. Okay. I, I did not understand that they were asking for, for, I know they just, I thought they wanted to be put on the agenda at our convenience. But <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, okay. I'm sorry. Can you explain this? Washington County Sheriff's Office? Washington County Sheriff. She told, uh, Robin told us at the last meeting that they had called her about Brett, Brett coming Meyer. to a meeting. Yep, yeah, Brett Meyer. And uh, she told us that, but she, and then they called her like, today, or she yep. said, are we on the agenda? And she had to say, no. And what, what do they want to talk about? Do we have any information about what they want? Well, one of the things is that they want to introduce the new Sheriff. That'd be great. Because um, Sam Hill is no longer the sheriff down there. Right. He retired. And maybe we can get some explanation as to why they never fulfilled their contract. Yep. It's like a meet and greet type thing. Yeah. That'd yep. be great. And I won't try to be too angry <laughs> <laughs> about the fact that they don't fulfill their job. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. Mrs. Durkee, anything else that you want to bring up? Nope, I think that is it. All right. Thanks, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Brandy, would you okay. be willing to do the town treasurer's report, please? Yep. Reports um, that I gave you, balance sheet, financial statements, and due to do from. Income over the last two weeks, cash receipts took in $985.30. Delinquencies, $310.97. Swenson quarterly, $7,961.48. Can you repeat that, Ms. Brandy? $7,000. $7,961.48. And I'm going to pass this along. This is to date what Swenson has give us, given us for deposits, how it's um, dispersed between the herb, the paving, and the highway. Um, and that's their quarterly? That was their quarterly amount, which went down. That was kind of, yeah. Um, so that would have been for January through March. Yep. Uh, money market. I transferred twenty thousand to pay to cover bills. Payroll was ten thousand two hundred twenty-two dollars and twenty-three cents. Accounts payable nineteen thousand seven hundred fifty-four dollars and ninety-five cents. Uh, goodies, um, and that's not mine to discuss. So questions? Could one of you have a copy of the school lease? No, you could. Uh, the last one I found was 2019. What? It's the last one I found. Oh, geez. I mean, they re renegotiated it. Last year, didn't they? Michael was involved with that. Yeah. Yeah, Michael was involved. Yeah. I should have so one in the office. We should have one for twenty one, twenty two. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Unless he brought it in, we wouldn't have one. We ha we could call the school and ask. Uh, we have to call OSSU. Because hmm. it was probably signed at the meeting. It was signed at there. the at at that formal meeting. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so Which I did not attend. Can we reach out to OSSU? Please. Taylor. I don't know if she's on maternity. And this lease went through 2020. 
21. Right, mm -hmm. so we have, we have to have one that's more recent. Mm -hmm. We at least have to have the 21, 22. And I know that 22, 23 was renegotiated, so we should have two more. Mm -hmm. um, we, can, we can reach out to Lisa McCarthy I don't know if she'll have a copy of the lease, but at least she can get us in touch with someone who does, because she's the principal of Woodbury and Lakeview. Um, Ms. Brandy, are you going to... Is she involved in the lease negotiation? No, but she can... Yeah, I can just send an email to Taylor at the front desk, and she just bounce me in a copy, and I can kick it and then store one in the office. Okay, great. If you guys want to see one digitally... Or I can make a digital copy would be fine. Like to okay. see one. Yeah. I don't need a physical copy. A digital copy would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Brandy. Anything else that you want to address? Nope. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we're on to school generator repairs. Which oh. is a really significant amount of money. Um, I guess it would have been nice to ask Larry or someone to come and explain to us why all of a sudden we need those humongous repairs. Miss Brandy, we do have a record of having a service contract with them in years past. Isn't that true? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. But it's just not, they're but saying as far it's not covered? That, I don't know. Okay. I can, um... Um, because it seems like <laughs> with a service contract, a lot of these things would have been dealt with. Hmm. I mean, I understand travel time and mileage and labor, okay? Um, but we've, we're looking at a $3,000 bill here for things that should have been covered under a service contract that we paid for. So I'm really confused as to why we're looking at $3,000 right now. I don't know. So um, could I have copies? Because some of this is well before my time. Do you think that you can find copies of our previous service contracts? Oh, yeah, well, I am. Yeah, those are all saved. It's the invoices that go back five years. They can I'll, just I'll, yeah, I'll take anything. Okay. I'll take anything. Because um, i got to be honest, I just don't, I don't feel like this is fair. Do we know from them that none of that stuff is covered? Like, did they specifically state that that's all money that we would have to pay separately from the contract? We don't know until we, don't know. we see the contract. Yeah. Um, so there was a there was a gap. There was. <laughs> in the con, yeah, in our in our service contract. Really? Yep. But we just they sent they sent one for the garage. They never sent. They never one sent one for the garage. Right. So that was. Yeah. And so we had to, I had to ask. She goes, oh, anyway. That's when she sent it, and it was, yeah, yeah. we're so already into, what, three months? Yeah, we signed it for two years, right? Yeah, we signed a two-year contract, one, yeah. the new one. So if but there was a gap... Yeah, but, I mean, all the stuff didn't fail over uh, a two-month gap. <laughs> yeah. Um, they actually came out and finally did what they were supposed to be doing, which is mm. really actually go through the unit. The last time I know that they did that was when we were out there together, and that's been three years. Mm -hmm. um, and none of these problems were identified at that point. Mm -hmm. So I'd really like to investigate this a little bit more, if you're willing to let me. Yeah. So send, send me whatever you can so I'm armed with that okay. before I go talk to them. Because I'll go in person and try to sort this out. Because this is a, a lot of money, and it's a generator that is already older. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but it didn't work this year. 
didn't work. I mean, school was canceled specifically because the generator was not working functionally mm -hmm. with a service contract on it. So they failed in their job. And that should be made clear. And I thought with a new service contract we would get something out of it, but it wasn't supposed to be a $3,000 maintenance bill. Mm -hmm. so, um, not, not okay with that. Okay. So any information you can give me, I'd love it. And I will uh, go and try to work this out. I'm going to loop the new the new gentleman who's the um, Larry handed down. Um, Sounds great. In the email. Please. That way we're all. Yeah. I'd love to be on the same page. Okay. But it's our generator. Correct. So. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. While we're on the topic of school, unless we have other comments on generator repairs. Mm -hmm. Thank you for understanding that. All right. I'm still with uh, school water and the school well, please. Did you get this email today? I haven't read it. Sorry. Okay. No, I haven't checked my there. email today either. All right. Okay, so this is from. Does someone want to introduce this since I haven't read it all? Anybody want to mm -hmm. introduce it? Oh, I. I um, if you read can it. Can I have that back? I did, yeah, I did read it. I did read it, but I didn't memorize it. But the, uh, uh, the report was done. Water testing was done by Wes. Samson, I think. Got a Waterbury. We did a 67 page report, which I did not print out. I have it here. Uh, <laughs> did you print it? I no, Miss Brandy oh, did. Oh, Brandy gave us one. Okay. Uh, so, it does look like PFAS uh, was found. They did some. Examination. At first, they looked at the spring box to see if there was possibly anything in the interior of the system that was contributing, and they found that was nothing. So it must be in the groundwater. They're going to do some additional testing, maybe of some other water sources in the area. Um, and in this letter from Sites management section of the Agency of Natural Resources. They said that based on these results, it is clear that PFAS is entering the spring box from groundwater, a gradient of the spring box. Uh, it is based on these sampling results and that the Orleans Southwest Union Elementary School District, as the owner operator of the school water supply, is a potentially responsible party for the PFAS identified in the school water supply, the Vermont DEC requests that OSUESD retain the services of a qualified engineer. Uh, an environmental consultant, they could be the same company familiar with water supply issues and PFAS to undertake the following actions. Continue sampling, immediately initiate sampling of water supplies in the area. Um, they said here a couple times that OSUESD is the owner, and I think they might, that might be an issue that the town has to deal with. Mm -hmm. because, you know, the whole police business. But there's also a possibility that uh, if for any reason OSUESD is unwilling or unable to undertake these actions, the state of Vermont under Title 10, Section 1283 may authorize the release of state funds from the Environmental Contingency Fund. And I think we were told at one time that something expensive has to happen, that there might be grant money available. It's true that there is potential for grant money, but um, not if we don't have a source. And unfortunately, 
they didn't do any testing other than the well head itself. So you can't fix you can't fix it without knowing a source. Is there any kind of filtration option? Mm -hmm. You can't filter out PFOA. Okay. Is there any one? Filtration. You can't filter out PFOAs. Oh. PFAS and PFOA can't, you oh. can't filter out. Mm. You have to irradiate them. Mm. Um, okay. So. Well, that's not good. Mm. Um, I think we need to talk with Mr. Joe Houston again. Yeah. And I think that we we had talked about trying to get some grant funding to have a broader sampling plan mm -hmm. of other people's groundwater wells. Mm -hmm. uh, this is why we brought it up the first time. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't understand the distribution of PFOA and PFAS, and granted, it's at the it's basically at the at the limit. It's right there. Mm -hmm. But still dangerous enough, especially for um, <laughs> children. <Yeah. laughs> um, but we don't understand the distribution of the of whatever this plume is, and in that location, there's really no good reason that we should have a PFAS or PFOA plume, mm. unless it's airborne and generated, which is a lot of places in rural Vermont right now. Mm. Um, there, the point source is you know. We, we point to sources that are easily identifiable. Wax from the floor, um, manufacturing facilities for coatings. None of that is going to be at that well site. So will they um, test some wells upstream? The idea would be that, down? well, it's not an upstream, downstream. We're talking about groundwater, so it doesn't yeah. work quite like that. But okay. um, we would we would have to have a broad sampling regime to understand sort of where it is and where it isn't. If we can okay. identify a plume, then there's something mm -hmm. that we can investigate as a source. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, we're talking about a new well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Will that solve the problem permanently? Like I know that the it's in the groundwater now, but will it later go lower? Until? No, mm -hmm. it won't. Um, typically, it doesn't. It flows with us within a certain horizon, and we have a very shallow well. Mm -hmm. um, if we draw, if, if we if we it's a, just a, it's a seep spring basically. Mm -hmm. If you draw a, a you know a deeper source well. Um, At it, that location, it will have to be a different location. It could be that location. But it's not our property. Right. You know, if we're going to drill a new well, we should probably put it on our own land. Or buy the property. Or buy the land. Buy a piece of appropriate uh, property. <laughs> but um, let's not go down that road yet until <laughs> we understand the distribution of the plume. Yeah. But the reality is that we've got a contaminant that's been identified. It's identified at the source. It's identified in the water at the school. That's enough that I think that we should be able to get some sort of state funding mm. to investigate the plume a little bit more I, before we move on to next steps. But um, this is why I think we should take advantage of the study that OSSU has done mm -hmm. and see about potential grant funding. It said it says here that the work plan must be prepared and submitted to the WMPD within 30 days of the date of this letter. Yeah. Well, we can so submit a. This is for Joe, who's Houston, so I'm sure yeah. he's gonna. Well, I'll talk to. Oh, mm -hmm. I can deal with Joe. Right. You want this part too, or? Uh, do you I don't know. Also, copy I have, that. I, I might make copies of this and then have it so it's available for everybody else. So you take that one and I'll make copies. You sure? Yeah. All right. Um, I'll start with Joe. I'll loop everybody in, and um, yeah, we'll just we have to coordinate with them. Mm. I mean, if it was on us, we would just go directly to a, to looking at grant options, mm -hmm. but we can't do that without looping in OSSU, mm -hmm. just like with the Jenny. Ms. Brandy, if anything else comes to you, mm -hmm. oh. would you please let me know? I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. 
start on that tomorrow with Joe. He's usually pretty responsive, so. Um, I'm sorry, I talked a lot with this one, but I do worry well, about I do worry about water. Good. Yeah, <laughs> I have some sense of it. But um, yeah. any other comments that need to be made about school water, other than the fact that our kids can't drink it? No. <laughs> My kids are drinking our spring water right now. I know. So they're drinking our spring water, too. Curious to know about that. I'm okay. curious to know as well. Mm. Yeah. We don't have it in our water. Mm. Have we, you tested for it? Yeah, we tested yeah. for PFAS uh, two oh, months ago. That's mm. good to know. It's just a little bit more. We need to just do the state test. Mm -hmm. So would, would it do any good to be proactive and have our water tested since I'm right up the hill here? Yeah, it's that great. expensive? Or, I yeah. mean, will it count if... Sure. Toward the yeah. as long as as long as you use the state lab. Yeah. Okay. But it may be nice if the state paid for it. Mm -hmm. Not you. It's an extra couple hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. So um, okay. let me see what I can find out. Because I would love to just take advantage of this moment and have people test their water. Because mm. this is not part of the normal test that you do. Unless you're a school. You can call up and say, hey, mail me one. It doesn't factor in. Mm. No. Unfortunately not. It's a, it's a certain set. It's a certain direction of tests. Mm -hmm. When you're doing organic phosphates, it's a different testing direction. That is mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. what we usually test for when you just do a common well water test. Uh, unfortunately. All right. It's on me for now. I'll talk to Joe and start from there. Other comments? School water? And PFAS, PFOA? Mm -hmm. so thanks for taking charge of it. Yeah. Do my best. Um, Mr. Larrabee? Yes. You down with doing the town road report? Sure. All right. Um, so I received a applicant mm. uh, for a highway. And I, as far as I've got, it's just looking it over. He's got lots of room, lots of experience mm -hmm. with all things that we need. Um, so I'm going to call him and have an interview with him mm -hmm. and get more information from him. Great. So that's, that's where we stand there. There's only mm -hmm. one so far. Uh, there's, there's rumor that there's another possibility, but <laughs> that's, all, that's all I have right now. <laughs> So, but I'm going to act on this one. I want to, I want to give him an interview and see what his the rest mm -hmm. of his story is. But his his resume and his application is very impressive. Awesome. So, if we can make things work. And even at half time, he knows. Well, that's part. Of, that's one of the questions. I think I don't. That wasn't specified in his application. So. But it was in the ad. That will be. Right. So he must have read that, yeah. and or he must be aware of that's what we're offering. So, so, yeah, yeah. So, but I'll get more information from him very soon. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, next on the list is greatest shopping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so just I, going to the market for some apples. So, yeah. 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 so Chris, last time you were with us, there was a, a discussion about whether we should look at, whether they should look at the used grader that was for up for auction at the state garage. So I hope you looked into that. So I did. It's a 2002, which is 21 years, 20 years old. old. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's got just under 4,000 hours on it, which honestly for that age is low hours, but it's still 22 years old. Still 22 mm -hmm. years old, yeah. and there's no telling what it's going to go for at auction. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's 30,000, 40,000, then it's probably a good deal. But if it goes to 80,000, 90,000, mm -hmm. then I'm out. I don't, I'm not, that's mm -hmm. not a good deal for us. Mainly because of the age, the chance of running out of ability to get parts. I mean, things are mm -hmm. going obsolete sooner now sooner than, rather. Yeah. than they used to. So that's a fear. Uh, I did talk to the sales lady from United, uh, who was hoping to sell us a new grader. And she is the grader that we, that's available to us is going to be rented. 
for a month mm -hmm. uh, to another town. Oh. Uh, so because it didn't sell, they're feeling they can they can rent it, which is actually in our it's favor. Good, yeah. Because one, it buys us a little bit more time mm -hmm. to decide and find money. And two, it lowers the price a little bit. Mm -hmm. they'll, take, they'll take the the money they get for the rental off the asking price. Mm -hmm. Would we still be able to get the, the regular warranty? Yes. Warranty will be... Will be intact. Intact, the same as if it was... Right. Uh, if it was new. Yeah. So that was one of the so things that we had the, talked about with buying new in the first place is mm -hmm. that we, we have some guarantee that we can get parts and service... Yes. yes. Which we and can't when we buy a used grader. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So the price still around four hundred and eight thousand dollars. Um. That sounds I don't high. I don't have that in front of me. That seems high to me. That sounds high. That's high because that was an estimate amount mm -hmm. that I threw in there um, as far as the her. What I threw in there for amount, not knowing. In three years, what a grader is going to cost us. Mm -hmm. So um, 360 something. Well, 363, that was before, oh wait, was before the trade in. So 363 is after the trade in. Yes, I, I think that's correct. Yeah. So, um, should we not bother to look at, should they not bother to look at the used one anymore? Take that off the table? I wouldn't waste your time, personally. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of other roadblocks in, in the place of that, too. <laughs> yeah. The auction is actually this Saturday. Oh. Viewing is Friday. Mm. I'm going out of town, so I'm not going to be able to look at it. This is the state auction down in, Ber in Berlin? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And they, you know, they said you have to, you have to get your bidder's number ahead of time mm -hmm. and let them know about financing. It just seems like for that, it's sort of a rush deal yeah. at this point. Yeah. And I don't really feel comfortable with it. It, it is going to be interesting to see how much it goes for. Yeah. Um, because of the low hours. Mm -hmm. It's 22 years old. That's right. And 22 year old gear does not hold up very well, even if you maintain it in Vermont. Yeah. I just don't think it's worth the time. Yeah. Let's, and let's, I, and let's, I agree. But I, you know, I said no, I would look thank you for it, Thank you for putting it out there. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's, I think we need to focus on how we can. How we can make this purchase from United work in terms of where we find the money. Are we at this point guaranteed to be able to buy it at the end of the rental period if we want it? There's no real guarantee. Okay. I mean, anybody can write a check mm -hmm. to own that grader. There's yeah. really no guarantee. Got it. Um, if we wanted to throw some money down, they mm -hmm. probably would hold it for us. Okay. But mm -hmm. if we're going to do that, then we might as well just jump in with both feet. Right. No. Well, it's, yeah, except for the fact that we might not have it. We might have to borrow the cash, so we might not have it all right. available right away. Well, yeah, there's no way we can buy it outright. Right, but we've got some, some, we wouldn't have to borrow the whole amount. No. So I understand we've got, we right. got some harp of money and we've got... Some money yeah, we've got the money for the truck that we haven't spent yet. <laughs> right. Well, we don't want to spend it. Well, I mean, if we needed <laughs> to make a down payment or something, that's all. <laughs> Leave the truck money alone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> too many more moving parts I, here. I think, I don't want to speak for Brandy, but you did some research on, on loans. Yeah, with me and Bank. She has all the documentation I dropped off, well, last meetings. I asked, um, I attended a webinar last week on municipal finance 
And the one thing that I, I learned a couple things, but one thing that I was reminded of, and Brandy probably knew this already, is you can't, you can borrow for up to five years without voter approval. If you go more than five years, you need to go to a special town meeting and have an Australian ballot. So whether or not we can afford to, um, Brandy had it here like maybe $85,000 a year um, for five years. If we put in some $100,000 of Barbara money, then that brings that down quite a wide, quite a ways. In Seems another like couple years, we're going to need another truck, so. Seems like we might want to get people's opinion, though. You know, voter approval for something like that, it's going to affect everybody's taxes, you know. Really significantly. Yeah, well. And I'll probably slow the process too, but it would slow it, it seems down like a lot. other people should have a say. What if they say no? Then they're the people we're representing, so that means no, right? Um, we should keep fixing our grader. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing I've done less road grading and less right. less work being done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So maybe yeah. we need to like, you know, if there were to be a meeting, we would have to explain, you know, what happens if we don't get a new grader. Mm -hmm. The other thing I learned at that uh, webinar was that uh, <laughs> even though the town, the voters approve a budget, it is a budget, and at some time, and at some point, the select board has a responsibility to go beyond the budget because we have a responsibility to do the things that we're responsible to do like maintain the roads mm -hmm. so if we if the grader were to break next month and we didn't have a plan for a new one then we would have to uh, have to yeah go well well but would it really break <laughs> Well, <laughs> brass tax. What do you What do you think? I'm afraid of this. Uh, yeah, it's about twelve thousand hours, hours on it, which is mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And motor transmission. That's when they go. Mm -hmm. um, we did one for Callus. We did motor and transmission at ten thousand hours. Mm -hmm. So with that said, we're 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 two thousand hours, hours above over. our our mm -hmm. maximum expectancy. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm feeling, you know, the pressure of, of doing something while we can get 45000 for the old one. I mean, that's that's huge money for a 30-odd-year-old grader. grader. And that might not be available for us next year to to get that $45,000 for a grader. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, I mean, I'm not trying to push too much, but I, I just think it's only going to be worse next year if we try to attempt this. Is it easy to get parts for it now? Which? The grader now. Uh, the, our existing grader? Yeah. They're, they're still available, but I haven't really had to, I haven't need to, needed anything. Yeah. I just wanted to see if they're still available. Right. I mean, they're, it's just like anything, some are, some are, mm -hmm. you know. So, Alfie and uh, Brandy uh, put in this request for ARPA funds and here it says help purchase new grader for the town without raising more taxes. Brandy, could you explain that? Mm. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> I think that says B R A. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't have to raise it in the money of the part in ARPA and after the ARPA discussion of uh, people wanting to spend money, that money on roads, and it's spend money. They asked them what roads. they wanted. So they wanted to spend. The biggest issue was roads. Was roads. Yeah. The, the new truck is paid for. Yeah. We're taking uh, up till now. We've been getting ninety thousand dollars a year towards HERF. Right. And then it we probably should raise that. Maybe not the one twenty, but some. So if even if it stayed at ninety, we'd have enough to make these payments. To make the payments, then. Yeah. yeah, without. But even though we still have to borrow. We still so, have to borrow. So that estimate right there for a brand new grader mm -hmm. on that spreadsheet doesn't have doesn't um, 
that wasn't factoring in the trade-in right. that we have right now. Right. It's That's not factoring in, I mean, it, in my head, we could have a greater paid off in two years. If um, we use ARPA money. If we use ARPA money right. and get a loan for two years from mm -hmm. Union Bank, it's a done deal. Mm. Um, I'm going to have roughly around 50, oh, a little bit over than 50,000 left over going in that's in the HERF mm -hmm. that'll be um, carryover. And then whether it's 90, and then, yeah. Okay. Then you're not looking at five years of interest. You are mm -hmm. only looking at what we need to borrow. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Seems like a very good use of ARPA funds to me. Me too. And that's what the people. That's that was higher. Survey. That was yes. high. The highest thing on the list mm -hmm. in the survey that was generated from the town. Mm -hmm. So. So what other questions do we have before deciding? that we need and can afford a new grader. The board has to decide how much they're going to transfer for next year's budget. For next year's budget. Yeah. yeah. And then well, we have, we'll, we'll have to go with Swinson, what's approved for $90,000. Approaching, approaching or having a discussion with the new owner of Swenson and increasing it. No, well, that's okay. But we I mean, there's, you don't, being, you don't need, I mean, there's cost of living. There's tons of reasons why everything's going up. Yeah. That should the be. raises the, mm -hmm. um, the, fuel. the fuel running up and down that hill Our, when they snap, mm -hmm. when they can't make mm -hmm. it up the hill. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, and that's going to be have to be resurfaced again, just as Chuck said. So it's, the, the money that we've gotten from Swenson hasn't been increased in over 20 years. I don't know if that's true, but she has the numbers, so. I'm oh, really? I'm gonna trust Ms. Brandon on this one. Okay, all right, <laughs> well, good. But really, I mean, that should be done. It should be negotiated, renegotiated, but I don't think that's gonna be able to be factored in to this decision because it's gonna take a while. Yep. Skip. How much money from the opera funding is available? To purchase the greater. To There's $197,000. We have other outstanding But we have other outstanding requests. requests. Sure. Yeah. That's pretty significant. Which part? The $197,000? Yeah, $197,000. Yeah. Out of 360 yeah. yeah, it's great. Except we do have other. We, have we other do have package. other. We we do have other requests that have to be considered. Considered or prioritized? Well, prioritized. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Not not top. Well, it's yeah. it's pretty. I mean, it's pretty difficult to ignore every other request. Understand. Yeah. If you look at uh, if you look at the amount of money that we budget for town services. The road budget takes up 60 percent. Understand. The town general fund takes up 20 percent. The fire department takes up 20 percent. So, if we use those percentages, that would mean we'd have that much money. <laughs> yeah. But that's a little too much. That's, maybe. that's, that's cute. And we have a total of, of other requests. Of yeah. Other requests are. I'm looking at it right now. I was actually going to ask if you guys could make sure I'm understanding it right. These, the money's already been allocated for. Yep. Is this yes. right? And these ones, it's still, right. still not been decided. Still not been decided. Yeah. Okay. What does this mean? Do you know? I mean, I did That's also the, get a. Go ahead. What part was that? The fire department. Premium pay for volunteers. That is oh. money that they requested because they did a lot of services on hazard, like hazard pay, and didn't didn't have a way to pay their volunteers. Okay. And the first two services. items there would be basically just going into their general fund. And I did have a informal conversation with Paul Cerruti about whether they might be able to specify something that they need. Mm -hmm. Because when we give out the ARPA money, we're supposed to kind of, you know, specify what it's going to be used for. And he did say that they need a bunch of new Equipment. Breathing apparatus, mm -hmm. but he puts, but 
would be like a hundred and over a hundred thousand dollars for that. But we could make it less. So they didn't do the fundraising for two years. Okay. And that was a conscious choice on their part. Mm-hmm. They spent more money than they had planned to because they did a lot more calls during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. This was just personal protective, right? Mm -hmm. And then this is hazard pay. Okay. Um, just speaking as a property taxpayer, I know where I would like to see. Well, I know this isn't like tax money, but I know where I'd like to see my tax money not have to go, and that I would rather have the roads taken care of than most of these other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the town building stuff, we didn't have any really firm numbers mm -hmm. when we started, but we do. And I don't know how committed the town is to the whole idea of winterizing the town hall, but there is stuff that has to be done. Like, even when I put that money in, we yeah. didn't even know about the foundation issue in the back. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And we do need to replace the north side of the roof before that becomes a problem, but... But um, things, does that all have to, I mean, could that come from somewhere else in the future besides ARPA funds? It could come out of general funds. General funds. We, we, we could um, request taxpayer approval in a future budget, mm -hmm. but it would be nice to at least do some of those things this year, the, mm -hmm. the foundation sinking in, and in my opinion. Yeah, I guess like for me, priority-wise, like it seems like the roads would take precedence, and all the other stuff would be great if we could do mm -hmm. it. But mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't have my calculator. But if we have two, let's see, what was that? Three? What was that number I just came up with? Three hundred and sixty-five dollars with interest might come up to well did that include the extent it did include the extended no the wing was 25,000 extended uh, trade allowance make sure oh okay it does include the extended warranty I guess zero is that possible I guess it's just part of the part of the whole price. I guess three hundred and eighty-three thousand dollars minus the forty-five. Yeah. No. Plus the twenty-five. Plus the and then minus the forty-five. Twenty-five for the wing. It's the wing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of no point in the winter. I mean, yeah, it's kind of no point in having it. The good could probably go, you know, buy it later. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's best to just buy it all together and it's put together at one time. Yeah, that would make sense. All right. Well, can we try to make a decision, please? I think that would be nice. So, um,. I mean, I, I think I hear what Lizzie's saying. Yeah. Which is that ARPA is a good use of funds I'd to put it get all. Us started. You you give it all. I yeah. think so. Yeah. It seems like the most crucial thing. Hmm. There's a high priority of the people who. Um, well, it's got really going to kind of be a slam to the fire department if we don't give them anything. I, I, we could. But if you don't get it rated, then the fire department can't get over the ropes to get where they need to be. So mm -hmm. it'd be a yeah. win-win, I'd say. Yeah. I mean, ARPA is sort of a windfall anyway, right? Like it wasn't mm -hmm. expected money, so if they don't right. get it, it's not like they're losing mm -hmm. something that they'd anticipated. Mm -hmm. Skip. Yeah, just a quick question: What other, uh, uh, what other persons or entities are on that ARPA list? There's a. Is that on the website anywhere? I don't know. I might have been. I, I don't know point. either. I think it was it's, at uh, some point. We did a um, special just, meeting one time, and we went through all, and yeah. I put just together. Just curious, what else is on there? Um, digitization of land records uh, for $25,000. Town office installation work for approximately $6,800. 
Town Hall weatherization and maintenance for about $30,000. Uh, a commercial tent yeah, for $4,000. Yeah. He wasn't real serious about that. Yeah, but it was a nice offer. Yeah. <laughs> um, WS fundraising, lost revenue for $800. Uh, Woodbury Community Library, lost fundraising revenue for $10,000. Uh, and then the fire department has a series of things that they requested. Uh, lost revenue from fundraising that totals to about 23000 Under budgeting during the pandemic for the calls that they did for about $17,000. Uh, personal protective devices for $370. And then premium pay, hazard pay for volunteers during the pandemic at $72,000. So their total request was around 112000 um, and I will be honest that they were the first ones to submit the requests. Um, and it was a fairly detailed request when they submitted it. Uh, so I do feel like they ought to get some recognition for their service. Um, the others are, I think, somewhat ancillary. Mm -hmm. WS has done fairly well with recent fundraising yeah they've and um, also and they're the not behind anymore library um that's also done fairly well yeah they got an extra four thousand dollars just in their budget this past year so you think wes is doing well with their own fundraising i think they're doing quite reasonably well yeah. I wouldn't say it's fantastic. I wouldn't mind giving them a thousand dollars, but yeah. I'm in the group, and I, I'm not um, saying that we couldn't use the money, but I what? Like I'm sorry, I'm in the group, the okay. WS group, and not to say that we can't use money, but again, as a taxpayer, I'd rather see fewer of my taxes um, have to go mm -hmm. up, and um, we can fundraise and make money mm -hmm. elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll make a motion to direct $120,000 of ARPA funds towards the purchase of a new grader. I'll second that. Lizzie, what do you think? I think we could go higher, but um, okay. if that's what you guys want, we can do a. You can, can, you can. Let's, let's, uh, let's, let's go higher. If that's something you'd like to do. 150, maybe. And 50 for the fire department, or 47, whatever. Sold 150. Sorry. Sold for 150. <laughs> what? Sold for 150. Why <laughs> 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 you 175? See, you should go to the auction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we have an amended motion for um, distributing $150,000 toward the purchase of a new grader from ARPA funds. Uh, may I have a second for that? A second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Well, I guess I think. Please. How can she second her 150? Well, I that have a motion. That was sort of withdrawn. Oh, okay. No. Okay. Or <laughs> amend it. <laughs> okay. I want to make sure no, no. it's legal. No, it's no, totally good. <laughs> Well, um, I guess I'd like to make a motion to give $40,000 to the fire department for whatever they need. And then there'll be another little bit left for some other things. That's right. I'll second that motion for $40,000 to the Woodbury Fire Department. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Leaves us with a little bit of trailer that we can throw around to a couple other small projects. Yeah. So, do, so does that mean we're gonna? We still to have to go to United Bank. Right, but we now we have to decide to buy the grader. Yes, we do. Now that we have some money. Okay, I'll make a motion that we buy the grader. <laughs> buy a new grader from. Oh, uh, let's see where to go. United. I just had it here. Jeez, oh girl. It's United Equipment, right? Yeah. Okay. For you 300. Can... Oh, here it is. 
$363,000. Is that, is that a motion? Yes. I'll a second, motion. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Cool. So. So we'll finance it for less than five years. And the voters will be happy because it won't raise their taxes. Yep. So yeah. now we have to give you some money to throw at them to see if we can yeah. actually guarantee the, yeah. the right. sale. That was my question. I don't know. I'm going to talk. I'm going to see her Wednesday Great. at okay. the equipment show. Oh. Um, you want to bring a check? There's a possibility that I could. I do. That would be yeah. great. But no, there's a possibility that I could, I could railroad that rental because it's not. I don't know that they've signed contract with that for that rental. Oh, yeah. But that would mean we'd have to have the full amount right away because they're not. You know, boop, boop. most likely that's not going to happen that fast. I don't think, right? Where it's getting the money? Well, getting we can money. certainly get a check for twenty thousand dollars or something like that for to hold it Enough until we can it. do the. But we loan. still have to talk to the bank still about our loan. Randy's pretty confident that <laughs> they're <laughs> like on it. She's already called me twice going, no. Yeah. Okay. So we're good as far as, yeah. Okay. She'll just, mm. um, okay. So maybe I will go. To the you equipment should, show? Yeah. You should go. Yeah. Should yeah, that sounds like fun. Where is it? Uh, VR. VR. Oh, VR, Where's really? It? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Everybody wants to go. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. That's so big, cool, shiny stuff. Yeah. So, you want to bring her a check? I think I should have a check in hand. You yeah. want to I'll give him a check for $20,000? Made out to United. No, don't make it to me. Oh, no, God. Yeah. 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 We've been down yeah, this road. Right. 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 To, se to secure the purchase. Okay. United Construction and Forestry. You want us to come in and sign an order? No. Okay. This is good enough? It was approved. All right. You'll still have to sign it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mm. Well, I feel better. About yeah, getting that process yeah. going. Oh. Yep. How about I have to admit, I took my kids to visit grandparents in Florida while they were on their spring break, mm -hmm. and then had to go to Mexico. And I spent a lot of time around heavy equipment that is pretty damn old mm. in a desert climate. And boy, does it look great. No salt. No salt. Maybe we should look in Mexico sand. for greater. Yeah. Yeah. You had to go to Mexico? Yeah. With your kids? No. Nope. No. They no. hung out in Florida. They I stayed was in Florida. Yeah, oh. they hung out in Florida. You were on a I was, job? I was on a job. Oh, dear. Um, oh. But it's funny what our climate does to equipment. Mm. Yeah. Our climate just, man, yeah. Yeah. it's, you know, we have, just have a, a tough climate mm -hmm. for that kind of gear. Yeah. Um, mm. So, I, but I feel much better about this. And I think the townspeople are going to feel great about having yeah. a reliable grader. I mean, we've been talking about it for decades. Yeah, <laughs> years, if not months, if not years. And if anybody wanted to speak up and and say don't buy a grader, they probably had opportunity to do that. I think so. I mean, it would have been nice to have it in the budget, but we we didn't, didn't get happen. to that. No. All right, let's push on. And it actually doesn't have to be in the budget because it's coming from. Her we'll see from her, her, her. her. We're allowed to spend it. Uh, Mr. Larby, do you want to tell us about how Greg's doing? Uh, I haven't really talked to him about his condition uh, exactly, but he's up and about. He's getting around. Great. Uh, it seems like things are going well. Great. Um, the, the girls may be able to tell more about that. 
Um, he was pretty excited to get his staple, 21 staples out of his back. Oh, yeah? He's moving good, and he's got a smile yeah. on his face. So. so is the pain, he's not in as much pain, hopefully? He said, yeah, he said yeah. that the, the numbness of his legs is Our completely back, gone. Wow, yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it seems like it might have been successful. Mm, yeah. That's so. wonderful. Great. Great. Um, so we had a discussion the, at the last meeting about apron washing. But the fire department has, we've typically leaned on the fire department to help us with that. Well, yeah, it, in the past, I think that has happened. But um, when it came up last week, Chuck and Ken both um, suggested it, because I didn't open my mouth soon enough. <laughs> And uh, it was kind of contentious because, well, Paul's only response was he doesn't feel the need that, that it's right to put that additional work hours, unpaid work hours, on his um, volunteers, on the volunteers. Mm -hmm. So I did ask him if it was possible that maybe we could get um, Tim to and and Alfie to work on a deal where they borrow the equipment and Tim could run it and during the work day and get paid and if somebody else needs to work with him, is that a two person job or? I would assume so. Yeah. 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 Uh, I actually sensed the meeting had to talk to Paul. Oh. And he is open to that, dis to that yeah. discussion to letting us use his equipment and us doing it on town time. Yeah. So cool. that's, that, I, I'm pretty sure that issue can be dissolved very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And it should not really involve well, us. It should be. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, Paul and I can work that yeah. out. That sounds sure. great. Right. Just, you know, I think there was, like you said, contention in the room. Yeah. And, uh, it just yeah. it didn't simmer. Yeah. So, Good. but I have talked to Paul and mm -hmm. uh, also about them borrowing our trucks because mm -hmm. I want to make sure who's driving the trucks yeah. when they're doing it and all of that stuff and also where the stuff's going that's important too right because essentially the highway trucks are carrying that material if it's going somewhere that's not sufficient right that could be that a, could be a, a problem on us, us. Right. so I want to also be Look at the sites. Look at the sites yeah. and make sure that they're, you know, not going to get us mm -hmm. in trouble. Mm -hmm. So, but Paul and I will work on that. Okay. It doesn't sound like it's happening. It, it sounds like it's going to happen soon, but I haven't heard back when. So mm -hmm. I don't think it's mm -hmm. going to be this weekend. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not. Oh. She's not going to be around. No. But, yeah. That's a little soon. Okay. But anyway, I think as far as the, the contention between fire trucks and town trucks, uh, we're going to work that out. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Thank you. Yeah. you be good. All right. All right. Well, we've dealt with uh, our road grader purchase and how to finance it. That's good. Mm -hmm. We don't have any new ARPA applications as far as I know. No. No. Um, and we have reallocated some funds for the fire department based on our vote. That leaves us with a little bit of money that we can talk about mm -hmm. in case, because we still could receive new applications, technically. Mm -hmm. the, or there are other ones that we haven't addressed. That we haven't addressed. Um, okay. We have personnel policy on here. Mm -hmm. I'm not ready. <laughs> I gotta be honest, I'm not. Well, you made us promise last to, that we'd be ready last time, and we both read the thing. Well, I've read it. <laughs> I read it took <laughs> notes. Whoa. But we can wait if you. No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm actually. No, I'm I actually. I, yeah. Are you ready? I, can, I, I read can. it, but it was like two weeks ago. <laughs> it's up to you all. We can address it now, or we can Sorry. promise that we will. Uh, Promise we'll do it at the next meeting. So it's it really is up to you all. I can go. Because I was I I I'm, I'm the one who was not present at the last meeting. So. And we decided because you uh, had the history that you know should do it without you. You knew. I mean, you went through it so many times before. That's true. Your 
Your, I've been through it a lot. Yeah. Should we postpone? Do it next time? Well, let's postpone. And make sure that's on the agenda for next meeting. And let's put it at the top and make everybody else suffer. Okay. <laughs> 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 We'll go through it faster if we put it at the top. So let's have that for the, what is that gonna be? The, I didn't even, 20 seconds, right? All right. Read it again. Um, Read it again. Yeah. Read it again. All right. Okay. Updates and other business. Um, Mr. Lindsay, would you like to introduce the large animal policy? I'd like to introduce it. Is that a question? <laughs> it's an invitation. Okay, it's an, well, invitation it's an invitation to so do something that you don't want to do. But okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> nope. But, Yes, it was. I was perfect it was, for this <laughs> No, I know she gave us one. So, when I was last on this select board, we had an instance where two horses were killed on Route 14. We encountered a, a pickup truck and they were both dead. So, with that, it prompted us to put together a large domestic animal ordinance. And utilizing resources in the League of Cities and Towns, their attorneys, and our town attorney, who at that time was Paul Gillies, we put together this draft ordinance. And that has, I guess, sat uh, in the archives since I was last on the board, so. Before my time, before any of our time, as far yeah. as I know. So anyhow, you know, it passed muster back in 2017, so I'm not certain whether or not the statutes may have changed since okay. then. I would probably think not, but anyway, it would be something to look at. Okay. Did you compare it to the Gallus one? No. Okay. The short answer is no. Why would I do that? Because they had one that went to court and it was successful, except for a couple of changes that they have since proposed to make. And so, I mean, the fact that it went to court was yeah. Well, it was put together fairly recent, too. Yeah. So it would have all the new statutes. Right, yeah. If, if the statute, in fact, would change. Mm -hmm. So I could look at that, mm -hmm. and if someone would send me the latest for that. Uh, I can forward it to you, Steve. Yeah. I can forward it to you, because they forwarded it to us. Yeah. Yeah. Hoping for us to act on it. Oh, well, yeah. There, there's another one you should consider acting on, too. And it's another one that's sat languishing since it's just a domestic the, I left the board. Yeah. And it's a domestic this. Pet nuisance control ordinance, which deals with uh, dogs, cats, especially cats, um, wolf hybrid, things like that. And so this is, in 2017, it was written in further statutes back in 2017. And yeah. so, this was written because of someone on Route 14 who had vicious dogs that were crossing Route 14 and attacking people. Hmm. So hmm. with that, we rewrote this ordinance, and our town attorney, again, back then was Paul Gillies, and he sent a letter to the owner of the dogs, and they were successful in mediating that issue and so the dogs were kept within the premise. Hmm. So I have a copy of that here too. Excellent. Okay. So how does this differ from the one we already have in place? This one. Which one? The, 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 the dog one. Oh, the dog one? Well, it's up to date. It, 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 it deals with stray dogs, not mm -hmm. only just nuisance dogs, but it deals with strays. Because mm -hmm. the original ordinance was written, if I can read this, in 2000, and it hadn't been updated until 2017. Mm. So it, it has a few more paragraphs in it, and it has uh, updated statutes. Statutes. So you know, without looking at it to make sure the statutes are 
still viable, mm -hmm. still applicable, then uh, you know, I'd say take a look at it and see what you think. Okay. Thank you. And there's also, I think I sent it to you folks, these back in January. And there's uh, a way to adopt an ordinance. I'm sure you folks know that. There are specific uh, ways to do that. You know, when you have to post the ordinance, where to post, where to post it, it, how many meetings you have to have to make sure the ordinance is adopted properly. And without that a proper adoption, the ordinance is, is useless. It's, yeah, it's oh, yeah. yeah. So that's attached to the Yes. Yes. Yeah. And is there any chance you'd be willing to run that process for us? Which process is that? Getting the ordinance adopted, doing the notices, and having the meeting, and telling us about the meetings and things like that. I can set that up. It's up to the select board. The statute it says it's select yeah, it has yeah, to be yeah. the elected yeah. body. Well, we no, we already agreed at the first time we you know several weeks of, several meetings ago we agreed to go forward with the large animal ordinance okay but we haven't done any of it because other things well you know i could certainly lay out a timeline and if you wanted to do them both in the same meeting i don't see why you wouldn't be able to do them both at the same time yeah. at the same time mm -hmm. Don't see why not. As long as it's worn properly. Yeah. So I can set up a timeline. I don't know what your, your schedules are. Second Monday of second and fourth Monday. <laughs> well, I, you know, I believe there has to be a special meeting. There because has to be a special meeting it cannot after. Cannot be part of your regular normal, agenda. Scheduled really? No. Nope. Oh, well, we've, in terms of adoption history. Oh. Um. The agenda item at regular select board meeting is held today. If we move forward. Yeah. Read and approved at regular select board meeting on and entered in minutes of the meeting, which are approved on, could also be this meeting. Okay. Then we have to post it, but we still have a draft. Was it really an agenda item today? I mean, it was. It is on our agenda, update, large animal policy. Yeah. But we haven't posted it, and we still have a draft, right. which we have not reviewed. Right. So we really can't do anything. So we really can't do anything until we review it. Okay. It's not a draft. So. But, the, but it says right here, read and approve, read and approved at the regular select board meeting on blah blah blah. Yeah. But it doesn't say. Where does it say we have to have a special meeting? What was the date? Because I don't think I was at that meeting. Maybe that was before uh, I started? Maybe not. Uh, okay. Yeah. So this we'll, is... We'll, we'll figure it out. This, yeah. is, this, is, what, this is what we're going to do. Skip, would you come back in two weeks after we've had time to read this? Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Does that sound reasonable? We'll even put you before the personnel policy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I tell people the roads, not everybody can be first. <laughs> but I'll send this would you send that along to sure. all three of us? Yeah. Um, I'll send this letter out from Paul Gillis. Great. Because oh, not only does it deal it dealt with someone who is 14 who had vicious dogs, but it's also applicable to someone who has vicious dogs up on Old Quarry on Road. On Old Quarry Road. And this is the perfect framework to get that person to make sure those dogs are mm -hmm. contained uh, kept <laughs> properly mm -hmm. okay. so anyhow right. two weeks so what's your expectation in two weeks that we will have read this um that i mean i think that between the three of us we can probably cross-reference and make sure that the statutes are still applicable Jen then we'll have a formal Okay, we can formally the approve research it. On ordinances and how to properly warn them that would be great I'll if you don't mind doing that. Yeah. And then when we come back together on the 22nd, then we can have the first formal approval. Okay. So having read it. Okay. And then we can post it. Mm -hmm. 
Is that okay? It's okay. I'll be here Thank you. in two weeks. But I'm just wondering, I'll, I'll look at the timeline in terms of formal approval. Well, I mean, to make sure that the only thing that we can do at that next meeting, to be honest, is we can start we can start this process. Sorry, item number one. We can start with item one. Okay. That's the best we can possibly right. do. Okay. We'll do. And if you find any changes that are required in terms of statute, mm -hmm. let me know and I can change the Modify the draft. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'll, mm -hmm. I'll change the dates at least on these because, you know, one of them says it may have been adopted in 2017. Didn't happen, as far as I know. It did not. And one of them says Michael Gray, Guy Ruel, and Thomas Lizzie. Three dubious characters. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we got rid of it. Um. <laughs> well, thank All you. Right. I'm sorry. Thank you. I thank you. Really I love appreciate it. For this, and thank you for resending it. And thank you for copying, Robin. I still would prefer to read things on paper than on the screen. <laughs> Okay. Can I go now? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. More exciting things to come. Oh, what's, what's, what's yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Work? Oh, yeah, I really want to know all the things. Work. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Have a good night. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And uh, if I run across anything in terms of adoption of these ordinances that seem out of line with what we want to do, I'll let you know. Yep. Thank you very much. Yeah. And we'll do, the, we'll do the same. Okay. I'll send thanks to you if I run into him. Thank you, Skip. You're welcome. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> man, those acronyms are really so, getting good. Um, we talked about this a little at the last meeting, uh, Chris, and I was concerned that you, well, um, we're done with now, I guess, but you had said you thought there were going to be other resources for money for. Um, energy improvements in the build in the town buildings and i didn't know if you were maybe talking about this municipal energy resilience program but that's one of the ones i was talking about i did i really don't think it's going to help us at all it doesn't help i looked at it as well it's too much it's, too much there's, stuff too much there's a lot of uh stipulation right and there's a plus plus it's going to be ranked as and the projects we have are not like big energy savers if we winterize the town hall we'll probably use more energy rather than less. Well, because they'll actually be but, using the building. Right, I mean, that, that's a good goal, but it's not an energy saving goal. <laughs> okay, so Nichols Dam Road again. We uh, didn't get the letter from our attorney yet, so I'll have some more to talk about that under executive session. Okay. Cranberry Meadow update, um, just another step in the process that uh, we're moving towards uh, um, closing sometime this month. There were no responses, nobody requested a special meeting based on the uh, required uh, notice that was posted. So that's a good thing. Okay. So I guess I would make a motion that we go into an ex executive session. I will second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So, based on VSA 313A1E, we are now in executive, se <laughs> executive session for the Woodbury Select Board. Seven.